Greetings and welcome to a new video about another electric circuit example. This is our second example about the superposition principle on DC electric circuits. We will again look at the calculation step by step and also work out our simulations in SPICE to verify our calculations. So let's look at our problem in this case. We have the following circuit given and it is a little bit different than the first example. We have again three resistors and one DC voltage source. In addition, we have one uh, DC current source. And instead of a voltage source here, we have a current source. The values of the uh, voltage source and the current source are shown here. So 75 volts for VA, IS is six amps, and we have R1, R2, and R3 also. We like to know the using the position principle, calculate the current through R2 and that is actually this current. So orientation is given from positive to the negative always and you go from top to bottom. So how do we work this out? Let's look at our solutions. Step one, keep only one independent source at a time. We have two independent sources so we choose one of them, this one or that one and then disable the others and we will then see what kind of effect it has on this current I2. Now we only activate in this case VA, I start with a VA. That means the IS, the current source, ideal current source must be an open. That is the condition in the superposition principle. That means the following, this circuit then, this will become this because the open circuit of IS will create here an open. Now we can see actually the following. R3 is actually here floating because one end of the R3 is connected still in this on this node. But the other end was connected to the current source that is now open, so it's actually no current flow anymore through R3. So we can say actually the following, still this current here, but then uh, due to that VA only, given by this notation, but we can say that then this circuit actually becomes effectively this circuit. And still we have only R2 here and R3 is actually just out of the picture. And still the same current is here. Now we have actually a series combination of three components, VA and R1, R2 as resistors. So we can say instead of in, 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 uh, in case of this circuit, we would like to calculate I2. We can also say, let's calculate the total current given by this VA and then equate that to this uh, current because they are equal to each other because we have a series circuit. So in a series circuit, this current from the source is equal to the current through R1 and that is equal to current through R2. So we can say I2 due to VA is equal to the voltage over the total resistance R1 and R2. So 75 over 150 because 50 and 100 for R1 and R2 together, you will get 0.5 amps. So we have now the first part of our analysis. Now going to the second part, now we will activate the current source and then disable the VA, the voltage source. VA is a short, so that means this circuit will then be produced for this action. So shorted VA, current source in place. What do we have now? We see actually the following, the R1 and R2 now are effectively in parallel. And R3 is actually in series with the current source. But the current source here defines the current in this branch. And then at this node, X, it actually splits a part of the part of the current of IS goes through R2, and the other part goes to R1. So this current, what we like to calculate due to IS, will not be affected by R3. Why? Because this branch current is already determined by IS. So this is a very important node. Resistor R3 will not have an effect, has no effect on the flow of the currents through R1 and R2. That's very important. If this was a voltage source, then it will have an effect because then there will be some voltage drop here and also, of course, some current uh, reduction to that resistor. Now, let's see then what we need to do now because now we can forget about actually R3. We can say this current will now split in these two branches. Now we can use current divider rule, very handy. And we can say this current here in R2 will be then equal to 
this expression given here. So it is the R1, the other resistor, divided by the total resistors. So R1 and R2, and then times the IS. This is, by the way, only possible or valid directly when you have two resistors in parallel. If you have three or four, you need to reduce that back to two resistors. So if you have, for example, another parallel combination of, let's say, R4, then you need to have the R1 and R4 together, parallel combination of that one, make that a new resistor, and then use this formula. Now, let's then work it out. It's 50 over 50 plus 100 times 6, and it will give you, because 6 was the 6 amps for the IS, it will give you three, uh, 2 amps, I mean. You can see, actually, again, in the... In all these calculations, R3 is not used any, uh, anyhow. So it is still just a business of R1, R2, IS, and VA only. Now, we are actually almost done because now we have the two separate results. Now, step two says combine the results to get a total solution. I2 is I2 due to VA plus I2 due to, v, uh, due to IS. Now, we have 0.5 from the first step, 2 amps from the second step, so that will be then 2.5 amps. So we have now everything, and we already calculated, actually, the required current through I, uh, I mean R2. Now let's then summarize, actually, the situation. That's always handy. This circuit, actually, what we have given, what we did was actually looking at one independent sort at a time and then we made this active and the rest actually inactive and you got this circuit and this circuit was also uh, made by making this active so another variant uh, variation and you get actually this one by shorting this so disabling the VA and making only IS active now what's happening is actually this circuit was simplified in this form because the R3 was sort of floating and has no effect on our analysis and this current was calculated the 0.25 I mean for this current in this case the R3 has no effect so we just use directly the current divider rule and we got 2 so the total solution was then the summation of the 0.5 amps and the 2 amps and it was then 2.5 amps all right so that was now a summary of the total analysis before now let's also look at the simulations this is the simulation circuit i have developed in the spice you can see the re, uh, the values for the resistors and also the voltage source 75 and all the current source 6 amps now this is the table of results i have generated from this circuit we have i2 of 2.5 amps calculated it's actually the current from node 2 to 0 because that's ground and that's actually shown here so that's all given here in the red box. I underscore R2 is 2.5 amps. And it's exactly what we have calculated. So that is the verification that this is indeed correct from the simulations also. So very good. We have verified this and also check this in our simulations. Let's also do that in the, the SPI simulator uh, itself. So see how you can actually generate this table and so we will discuss briefly more about the circuit also so let's jump to the circuit all right now we are back to the simulator here we have the circuit the va the voltage source is the current source all of them are ideal and we have three resistors given here now what i will do is i will now generate the table so you go to analysis in the simulator and then dc analysis because we do dc analysis in our circuit and then use table of results. Then you'll generate a table with a lot of information. Now, we can now highlight actually what you want. Now, by this pen, this here, you can click on R2 and you will get its current and also its voltage. So you can see 2.5 amps and 2 point, 250 volts because it is 2.5 amps times the 100 ohms. You can also click on other components and it will be highlighted in its own current, etc. What you see here is very interesting. The current flowing here from 2 to 3 is minus 6. That's just the orientation or the ch ch uh, let's say the uh, choice by the simulator. But the current from let's say two, uh, 3 to 2 is actually this 6 amps. So 6 amps going from right to left and from left to right is minus 6. So that means actually our confirmation from the discussion before that the current here is just 6 amps. So it is not changing. That means the uh, the R3 has no effect on the current flow here and also here. So in R1 and R2, 
it will not have an effect. So you can check for yourself and also the node voltages and other uh, analysis you can make for yourself here. So there are many more other things to do. You can also do analysis, DC analysis and go here and then only check the specific component. That's maybe also a little bit uh, handy if you're interested in a specific component. All right, this was for example number two about the superposition principle for our DC electric circuit. We'll continue with more complicated examples to illustrate the concept in great detail and also see other theorems and methods uh, like Thevenin, and Norton and others to illustrate the concept. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thank you for your cooperation and see you next time in another interesting video. Take care.